So um, just uh, so that you know, uh, my boat has a floating IP, and it's named Traceroute. Um, <laughs> good morning. So it's been something like 10 years since we first had this conversation where we described the need for something open and modular that would do uh, public cloud services. So we went from uh, a moment where we talked about it to a moment where we started uh, the open, what would become the OpenStack Foundation uh, a few years later. Eight years ago, uh, we started focusing OpenStack on how to build public clouds. And we were quite successful at it, looking at the slide that uh, Jonathan uh, presented earlier today. Um, and very quickly, we realized that if we wanted to implement the hybridity of the cloud, enabling people to move workload from public to uh, private cloud, we also needed to care about private cloud. And I think we've been also quite successful at dealing uh, and offering a, a good solution for private cloud. And on the way, we got carried toward the telco uh, use case. And these three use cases, which we've been covering quite well as a community, had a very strong focus on delivering VMs. But really, what's going on now? Well, the reality is that we have to take care of new types of workloads, containers, AI, big data, all kinds of analytics, HPC, workloads that needs direct hardware, specific hardware access like GPUs, v FPGAs, and more. And all of this is not solely on VMs. For example, when I deploy a container platform, I want to be able to deploy it either within a VM or on bare metal. When I deploy a big data application, some of this application will perform a lot better if I'm on bare metal. So what we are dealing with right now is something that is quite new from what we had envisioned at the start. Nova is not anymore the center of our universe. And Thanks to the excellent work that the community has been putting together, work in Ironic, work in Cinder, work in so many projects that I won't be able to name them all, we are able now to offer the same scalability, the same isolation, the same automation on bare metal as we've been able to deliver on VM. And that's absolutely phenomenal. That means that we have all the basic function to deliver the software-defined data center, regardless of the workload that you want to deploy. I mean, uh, a little example here. Uh, the Career Project, which really is a CNI implementation, a Kubernetes uh, container native, um, um, uh, sorry, a container networking infrastructure plugin that talks directly to Neutron. Um, that enables security groups to be synchronized between the two uh, layers, that enables to remove the, over, the over, overlay stacking. Uh, this is phenomenal. The integration with Ansible, and particularly Ansible networking, which allows an ML2 plugin to dynamically configure any top of rack switch, depending on how you want to configure your isolation. This is phenomenal. So we have an OpenStack that is delivering all these primitives. We have Kubernetes, which is clearly the winner of how to orchestrate workload across cluster. In many people describe Kubernetes as being the equivalent of what Linux did to a single machine, orchestrating multiple processes, turned into how do we have something operating processes across a cluster of machines? This is what Kubernetes is delivering. And when you combine the two, this is where you get the open infrastructure the foundation is speaking about. This is really a non-zero sum game. It's the assembly of the two that deliver the complete value of what people want to achieve. 
So today, thanks to the great work done by the community on Rocky, we are announcing Red Hat OpenStack 14. Um, it will be uh, released uh, in the next month. And it's including all the work that is uh, needed to make Kubernetes, or more precisely, our distribution of Kubernetes OpenShift run as smoothly as possible on top of OpenStack. Um, it's also a day where we are announcing our first official design for an edge use case, which we call the virtual central office. This is based on work that was done in the OPNFV community that is assembling OpenStack, Kubernetes, OpenDaylight, um, Ansible to deliver the ability to have data centers that are closer to the end users. It's the first use case that we implement. We are going to implement quite a few more in the next few releases. Another thing that we are uh, delivering uh, and uh, we'll be announcing very shortly is the ability to provide dynamic migration of workloads off of VMware onto OpenStack, all through a graphical user interface. And there is a lot more coming up in the next few months, all centered around this idea that delivering an, infra an open infrastructure is not just about VMs, it's about the entire picture. In order to give an example of what can be done using software that we deliver today, I wanted to uh, show this video about this project from uh, the Children's Hospital that is really helping radiologists to make faster interpretation of the uh, x-rays and other imagery. Demo-C tries to change the public cloud model of today, which is mostly stood up by a single vendor. It has been founded by the collaboration of the five research universities in the New England region, MIT, UMass, BU, Northeastern, and Harvard. Right, my name is Atatürk. I'm a research scientist at uh, Massachusetts Open Cloud. I'm leading the big data and healthcare analytics efforts. With the scale of MOC and with the deployment of Chris on MOC, now they can use some of the solutions that they were unable to use. One example is the image registration that they do for uh, MRI images, which is practically taking multiple MRI images and using those multiple images to cancel out the noise within the image. Normally, when they do the same operation using the hospital resources, this takes almost a day, but with our facilities, we can reduce this to minutes. So we are now at a stage where we need to build a community around Chris and an open source infrastructure, and that's where then comes in. My name is Dan McPherson, and I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. We have several folks here that are based out of the Boston office who work on the CRIS project. They do so with about 20% of their time, and we uh, treat it like we do most of the projects we, we treat at Red Hat. CRIS on the MOC runs on top of our OpenShift offering. And OpenShift provides the job framework for which we run the image processing software. OpenShift gives us the ability to utilize our resources very, very efficiently. So any resource that we don't use are given back to OpenStack to use and service to other infrastructure users. The OpenShift environment gives us this whole model of encapsulating the applications and their dependencies today. And now it comes a really exciting part because Red Hat engineers are working together with us to exploit GPUs on, on the platform so that we can actually plumb them all the way through and make them available to the application. And then how do we exploit the parallelism so we can set up you know, a dozen or a hundred containers to work in parallel on a problem. The opportunity that we have here with an open cloud, with researchers and with industry, and specifically Red Hat technologists working with us, meeting the goals of this application is a transformative opportunity. So that's uh, Chris. But right now, 
we are experiencing something that is a bit of a dilemma. When we started this project, we started it with a very innovative principle, doing deliveries every six months. But I think that we, it is now the right time for us to start considering accelerating our development cycle. I'm not talking about how quickly people will upgrade. I'm just talking about how quickly we deliver new releases. We've now proven with fast forward upgrade that you don't need to wait, uh, you, you don't need to upgrade through each version in order to do an upgrade. We can skip three versions or even more versions. Uh, this is now proven. We now have customers able to do that. So I think it's now time for us to be able to innovate faster, to deliver faster along with the other communities that are already on the three month cycle. So that's my proposal. Uh, today, I hope uh, we'll be able to discuss that further in the next few months. In any case, the open infrastructure is our shared mission. We have tons of opportunities to collaborate, and I hope uh, this week will be uh, very fruitful. Thank you very much.